Welcome to the tutorial on business ethics. Today the chapter is business and environmental sustainability. We can see there are two quotes related to this chapter. The first one is a thing is right when it tends to preserve the integrity, stability and beauty of the biotic community. It is wrong when it does otherwise. That means Whenever you are doing something by maintaining the integrity, stability and beauty of the biotic community, I mean the ecological surroundings, then you are in the right way. And another quote is, growth for the sake of growth is the ideology of the cancer cell. I mean just if you grow your business for the purpose of growth, that would not be a good idea. You should focus on the sustainable growth to get a sustainable opportunity or competitive advantage in the market. Sustainable development is an idea under which a business should meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs. Generally, we believe that environmental challenges always create a burden on business but it's not a true idea because environmental regulation can add cost to business operations and restrict business choice but it also provide opportunities for business as for example whenever an automobile manufacturer sees government mandated fuel efficiency standard as a burden on its ability to sell large sport utility vehicles, another company sees it as an opportunity to market fuel efficient hybrids. That means some company may think that government regulation regarding the fuel efficiency would be a burden. On the other hand, another company may utilize this opportunity by producing a fuel efficient hybrid car or vehicle. Another example is, while one agricultural business sees restrictions on pesticide use as a burden, another sees the opportunity to market organic products. That means, some farmer can think that the restriction on using pesticide is a burden. On the other hand, another farmer can utilize this opportunity by producing organic products because by producing organic products that farmer can gain a competitive advantage nowadays we have entered the sustainability revolution in this sustainability revolution we need to create environmentally and economically sustainable products and services to get competitive advantage that's why the economic winners will be the farms and industries that do the most environmental good and in this chapter we will discuss this ethical issue i mean this chapter will focus what responsibilities contemporary business have regarding the natural environment the sustainable business and the sustainable economic development seek to create new ways of doing business in which business success is measured in terms of economic ethical and environmental sustainability which is also known as triple bottom line approach i mean to ensure sustainability we need to focus on economic ethical and environmental good sustainable business ventures may find that environmental considerations offer creative and entrepreneurial business enormous opportunities that means whenever a business focus on sustainable issues that business can get opportunities and sustainable growth by ensuring competitive advantage how environmental challenges can create business opportunities here is a diagram from which we can explain these environmental challenges and as well as the opportunities from these challenges here we can see there is a line this line is 
depicting the resources which is declining and here is another line which is depicting the demand which is increasing and there is a narrow area after that there is a wider area and this funnel diagram is indicating that although the resources are declining as well as the demand for resources are increasing the company which will focus on sustainability issue by ensuring environmental sustainability that company can pass this tunnel because there is a huge demand of those products and service which will focus on the environmental sustainability that's why we can say that the business that will be unable to envision the sustainable future will not be able to pass this narrow wall and the business which will have innovative and entrepreneurial business they can find a way through this tunnel because there is a huge demand of sustainable product and service to pass the narrow funnel as shown in the previous slide the business need to backcast a path toward sustainability the backcast is a opposite word of forecast backcasting examines what the future will be when we emerge through the funnel in that case knowing what the future must be creative business then look backward to the present and determine what must be done to arrive at the future that means whenever you can predict the future to survive in the future business there should be sustainability in that case after observing the future you can look backward to the present and determine what must be done to arrive at the future sustainable business must use resources and produce waste at rates that do not jeopardize human well-being by exceeding the earth's capacity to renew the resources and to absorb the waste that means the business should consume the resources in a rate by which it will not eliminate it and the business should create waste in such a way that the earth can absorb the waste and if any business can do so they will be able to move through the funnel and emerge as a successful sustainable business that's why we can say that sustainable business is the wave of the future a range of values that play a role in environmental decision making deciding what we should do is the ultimate goal of practical reason and our values are those standards that encourage us to act one way rather than another generally a business produces goods or service for the human beings and to do that the business use water air soil and other aspects of the environment but if we need to ensure the health and safety of the human beings in the future in that case we need to ensure clean water healthy air fertile soil an ozone layer to screen out solar radiation and a biosphere that maintains the delicate balance of climate if we can ensure these issues then we as a human being can survive in the future as a human being if we emphasize the importance of self interested reasoning in that case we need to consider two aspects of contemporary environmental realities the first aspect is we may threaten human life if we don't focus on climate change species extinction soil erosion desertification nuclear waste if we don't consider these issues we may threaten human life into the indefinite future another aspect is the science of ecology and its understanding of the interrelatedness of natural systems have helped us 
understand the wide range of human dependence on ecosystems that means as a human being we are interdependent on the other environmental species that's why although we think that varied waste were gone forever but the toxins can seep into groundwater and contaminate drinking water another thing is that if we use pesticide that would accumulate throughout the food chain and pose greatest dangers in that ecological system another thing once upon a time we thought that the ocean fisheries were inexhaustible but presently we can see that those are exhausted that's why a delicate environmental balance is necessary to maintain life supporting systems natural world has a value as a resource because this natural world provide humans with both direct benefits and indirect benefits direct benefits can be obtained from the air water and food and indirect benefits can be obtained from the goods and services produced by the business that's why as a business organization or as a human being we should not exploit the natural resources so we can say business had good reasons for conserving natural resources because the natural world had the productive capacity to produce long term income but that can be only possible if we manage and use those resources prudently besides the self interested reasons to protect human life and health the natural environment is essential and valuable for many other reasons such as the natural resources has values in the following areas such as aesthetic values spiritual values inspirational values as always well we can see nature has a religious and spiritual values sometimes natural world have a symbolic value historical value and diverse psychological values as serenity and exhilaration so these values can clearly conflict with the use of the earth itself as a resource to physically as opposed to spiritually sustain those who live on it that means we can maintain this values if we ensure the sustainability while living on this earth by using the surrounding natural resources difference between market based and regulatory based environmental policies to meet the environmental responsibilities of business there are two approach the first one is efficient market approach and the second one is governmental regulation approach under the efficient market approach the responsible managers try to seek profits and allow the market to allocate resources efficiently that type of consideration can be compared as a utilitarian issue on the other hand under the governmental regulation approach the business try to develop a compliance structure to ensure that it conforms to those regulatory requirements under the market based approach we focus on the corporate social responsibility and we believe that environmental problems are economic problems that deserve economic solutions and environmental problems involve the allocation and distribution of limited resources that's why efficient markets can address the environmental challenges by ensuring the efficient allocation and distribution of the resources under the basis of governmental regulations the government try to establish various law or act such as clean air act water pollution act endangered species act 
these are the act by which the government try to address the environmental problems businesses environmental responsibilities that flow from each approach each approach means the approach of efficient market as well as government approach as the stakeholder of a business organization we need to ensure optimal level of pollution that would best serve the society's interest and this optimal level is best attained by leaving it to a competitive market society could strive for pure air and water but the cost that this would entail would be too high that means if any society strive for pure air and water in that case there would be a high cost a more reasonable approach is to aim for air and water quality that is safe enough to breathe and drink without costing too much and this balance the optimal level of pollution can be achieved through competitive markets a society need to pay for the pollution reduction by which we can achieve benefits which will outweigh the cost the free market also provides an answer for the resource conservation from a strict market economic perspective we can say that resources are infinite because all resources are fungible that means resources can be replaced by substitute and in this sense resources are infinite and resources that are not being used to satisfy consumer demand are being wasted we can preserve the environmentally sensitive areas but if we preserve those areas for the sake of preservation that would be wasteful as for example we can say that disney plan would have been financially very profitable leaving it undeveloped would be wasting these valuable resources in adequacies of soul reliance on a market based approach market based approach has some limitations in case of ensuring environmental sustainability the first limitations or first failure is that this market based approach don't consider the existence of externalities externalities means the people downwind the neighbors and the future generation suppose we are doing business and we may do the pollution for the following issues such as air pollution ground water contamination and depletion soil erosion nuclear waste disposal and the cost for this pollution is borne by the external parties the external parties means people downwind neighbors and future generations and in the free market economy we cannot guarantee optimal results for externalities the second type of market failure may occur when no markets exist to create a price for important social goods we cannot guarantee a price for the endangered species scenic vistas rare plants and animals and biodiversity as well as we cannot guarantee the price for the clean air and ocean fisheries since there is no exchange value the market approach cannot even pretend to achieve its own goals of efficiently meeting consumer demand markets alone fail to guarantee that such important public goods are preserved and protected the market cannot guarantee the efficient use of those issues to meet the consumer demand the third failure done by the market based approach is that the market fail to distinguish between the individual decisions and group consequences we can miss important ethical and policy questions if we leave policy decisions solely to the outcome of individual decisions i mean if we depend on the individual decisions while making policy in that case we are going to 
face a failure as for example if we consider that a consumer is going to purchase a sports utility vehicle by considering that only one sports utility vehicle will not do any harm for the environment because that harm would be a very small harm and if all the consumers think in that way that their decision will make no difference in that case every consumer made exactly the same decision and the consequences would be significantly different if we consider the group consequences we learn about market failures and thereby prevent harms in the future only by sacrificing the first generation as a means of gaining this information that means market can gain information only by sacrificing the first generation which is another failure by the market based approach in adequacies of regulatory based environmental policies a regulatory based environmental policy means government regulation based environmental policies that policies also have inadequacies or problems we can see the first problem this regulatory based environmental policies cannot understand the influence that business can have in establishing a law because whenever a government is trying to establish a law in that case there may be huge pressure from a specific industry by lobbying the influence to exempt some section from that law which will benefit the businesses but that will create a negative impact for the environment and another problem or another failure of the regulatory based or government based policy is that the government also fail to understand the ability of the business to influence consumer choice that means sometimes the businesses can shape the demand of the customer in that case although there may be a regulation but due to the influence by the business the customer may fail to understand the environmental issue and they will consume any product or service that will harm the environment because the production process or the distribution process may be unfavorable for the environment and that type of issue cannot be estimated by the government that's why there is another failure in the regulatory based environmental policies another failure or problem under the regulatory based environmental policies or government based environmental policies is that law or the regulation cannot cover all the environmental issues as for example the government can establish or enact a law for a specific area but the business can do the same harm to a remote area which will provide a indirect effect to that area and another issue is that national regulations will be ineffective for international environmental challenges another problem by the regulatory based environmental policies is that the regulatory model assumes that the economic growth is environmentally and ethically benign and under this notion or idea regulations establish site constraints on businesses pursuit of profits and as long as they remain within these constraints the government accept those activities as ethically legitimate whatever route to profitability management chooses in that case the managers can adopt site constraints or any unethical way which may be legitimate under the law in that case different routes towards profitability can have very different environmental consequences sustainable development and sustainable business the concept of sustainable development and sustainable business practice suggests radically new vision for integrating financial and environmental goals compared to the growth model that preceded it these three goals economic environmental and ethically sustainability are often referred to as the 
three pillars of sustainability. They are also known as triple bottom line approach for sustainability. Three pillars of sustainability or in triple bottom line approach, we consider the economic issue, environmental issue and ethical issue while doing development. In case of sustainable business practice, we need to establish a business model in which business activities meet the standards of the sustainability. Sustainable development is the development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And for that purpose, we should understand the economic activity as well as we should change our business model so that we can ensure the sustainable development. For sustainable business, we need to develop an economic system that uses resources only at a rate that can be sustained over the long term and that recycles or reuses both the byproducts of the production process and the products themselves. That means to ensure a sustainable business, we need to use resources at a small rate by which we can ensure sustainability of the resources as well as we should ensure the recycling the byproducts or reusing the products so that we can ensure sustainability for the environment. Business opportunities associated with a move toward sustainability. By ensuring sustainability, a business can get various types of opportunities. This sustainable offers a vision for the business. Sustainability is a prudent long-term strategy and by utilizing this long-term strategy or long-term vision, the business can ensure long-term survival. If any company fail to understand this long-term issue, in that case, the firm may face difficulties in the future. As for example, the ocean fishing industry. That industry failed to understand the exhausting fishing in the ocean and nowadays they are facing problem because there is a less fish in the ocean. The second opportunity under the sustainable issue is that the huge unmet market potential among the world's developing economies can only be met in sustainable ways. Nowadays, the customers are focusing on sustainable products and services. Those unmet market can be targeted by ensuring the sustainable production or by producing sustainable products or by providing sustainable services. The third benefit or third opportunities under the sustainability is that a business can save cost by following eco-efficiency production. Savings can be done on energy use as well as materials. If a business organization follow eco-efficiency production process, in that case it can reduce waste as well as it can reduce the cost for spending on waste and we can see minimizing waste make sense on financial grounds as well as on environmental grounds. The fourth opportunity of the sustainable business is that a business can ensure competitive advantage by sustainable business because nowadays the consumers are becoming environmentally concerned. That's why to get competitive advantage, they should follow the sustainable business. The company which follow the sustainable process that company can attract the workers because that issue can be used as a pride and satisfaction for the workers. Finally, sustainability is a good risk management strategy. If the company fails to understand the future risk by not following the sustainability, in that case the company can face legal liability. That's why opportunity get by the sustainability is that a firm can manage the risk by establishing a risk management strategy for the future. The sustainable principles of eco-efficiency, biomimicry and service. To ensure sustainability, a business model should ensure the following issues such as resources should not enter into the economic cycle from the biosphere at rates faster than they are replenished. 
and second issue is waste should be eliminated or at a minimum not produced at a rate faster than the biosphere can absorb it and another issue is the business should focus on using renewable energy i mean the business can rely on the sun there are three general principles by which a business can ensure sustainability the first principle is eco efficiency which is also known as doing more with less and the second principle is biomimicry that is also known as closed loop production and the third principle is service based economy which is known as shifting the business model from products to services now we are going to learn about the details of eco efficiency principle eco efficiency principle is a way by which a business can contribute to the sustainability by reducing resource uses in its production cycle as well as an individual can ensure sustainability by the following ways to ride a bike then to ride a bus to ride in a fuel cell or hybrid powered bus then in a diesel bus to ride in a bus then to drive a personal automobile to drive a hybrid car then an sports utility vehicle likewise business firm can improve energy and material efficiency in the following areas like lighting building design product design and distribution channels that means in eco efficiency principle we need to use less resource in the production process by using the present technologies the businesses can achieve at least a four fold increase in efficiency and sometimes it is considered ten fold increase that's why to ensure sustainability the business should reduce the use of resources in the production cycle the second principle to ensure sustainability is the biomimicry the biomimicry principle is also known as closed loop production under this biomimicry or closed loop production the business should integrate the production process in such a way that the waste of one production can be the raw material of other production or other industry in this way we can eliminate the waste that means whenever any production process producing product as well as by product or waste in that case there should be another industry in which the waste or by product can be used as a raw material for another product and in this way we can ensure synergies by this way we can eliminate the waste altogether rather than reducing it and there is another idea cradle to cradle responsibility under this idea a business should be responsible for incorporating the end results of its product back into the production cycle i mean the end product or the cell based product should be used in the production process and that should be ensured by the business and by following this we can eliminate the waste from the environment the third principle to ensure sustainability is the service based economy in this principle we need to shift the business model from products to services as a business the business should interpret the consumer demand as a demand for service for example in traditional economic activity we have seen that there is a demand for washing machines carpeting lights consumer electrics air conditioner cars computers and so forth and under this service based economy we need to convert the consumer demand as a demand for service that means traditionally there were demands for products and as a business organization we need to convert that demand for product into the demand for services as for example instead of selling the washing machines the company can provide service for cleaning instead of selling the carpeting a company can provide service for floor covering and so on that means under this service based economy the company can convert the 
demands of product into the demands of services and to do this the company may need to redesign their production process and by doing this conversion into product to service the company will focus on more durable and more recyclable products as for example we can see the interface corporation has made a transition from selling carpeting to leasing floor covering services once interface shifted to leasing floor covering services it created incentives to produce long lasting easily replaceable and recyclable carpets interface corporation thereby accepts responsibility for the entire life cycle of the product it markets through the service based economy a company can improve the production efficiencies as well as the company can reduce material and energy cost significantly on the other hand consumers can be benefited by getting the service at a lower cost and for a fewer burdens how marketing can be used both to support and detract from the goals of sustainable business sustainable or green marketing is a marketing of products on the basis of their environmentally friendly nature and we are going to discuss the support of marketing support of green marketing or sustainable marketing to ensure sustainability by considering four aspects product price promotion and placement a company can ensure sustainable business by doing green marketing on these four issues to ensure a sustainable business a company should focus on a sustainable product and to ensure a sustainable product the company should discover the need or the wants of the customer or consumer if the company can understand the needs and the wants of the customer in that case they can design and create the desired products by which they can build sustainability in the business the second part of marketing is price to ensure a sustainable pricing the company should include the environmental cost in the product price so that they can ensure environmental issues while doing the production process because if they include the environmental cost they can focus on the environmental issue the third aspect of marketing is the promotion and advertising by promotion and advertising a company or a business can shape the consumer demand they can educate the customer by providing the required information of that product and service that's why a sustainable business should introduce a promotional activities in which they can shape the customers demand in such a way that the customers or consumers demand for sustainable products and the customers become more aware about the environment in using the products and service traditionally the final aspect of marketing is placement to ensure a sustainable placement the company should design a effective or efficient distribution channel in which it can reduce the cost as well as it can reduce the use of energy and resources recent advances in marketing have emphasized that just in time inventory control large distribution centers and sophisticated transportation schemes can reduce the use of resources in distribution channel and another thing is that in placement or distribution channel we can ensure sustainability by emphasizing fuel efficiency and alternative fuel technologies used in transportation more localized and efficient distribution channels and a greater reliance on electronic rather than physical distributions so these are the ways by which we can ensure sustainability by reducing the use of energy and resources in distribution channel in summary we can say that to ensure a sustainable business company should focus on environmental sustainability otherwise they may face difficulties in the future that's why to survive in the upcoming future 
all the business organization should focus on sustainable business activities thank you